How to Report Private Insurance Fraud. One of the most common intakes that we have at our whistleblower law firm are questions regarding how does an individual report private insurance fraud? And I can say that that goes on several different tracks. One track has to do with an insider versus an outsider. And the other track is whether the individual is looking to obtain some sort of whistleblower award for the information or just wants to pass it along to the proper authorities. It may surprise most people to hear it, but most states do not have whistleblower statutes that enable individuals who report private insurance fraud to obtain a whistleblower award. Sounds crazy, but that's the case. And basically there are two states, Illinois and California, that do have statutes. The other states do not. So if you're aware of systemic fraud against a private insurance company in California or Illinois, you may be entitled to receive up to 50% of what's recovered through that litigation. So you have every incentive to report this systemic fraud and really no incentive to keep it quiet. If you're aware of a fraud along those lines, you should speak with a Illinois whistleblower law firm or a California whistleblower law firm to understand your rights. Going back to something else that I had flushed out, are you an insider or an outsider? Well, that's critical as well, because if you're on the inside and you have information then you could potentially cobble together the entirety of the case, or perhaps you know the entire case. And it's more than just knowing one specimen of fraud. That is not enough generally to bring a whistleblower action in either state. But if you know that a company has a systemic scheme to defraud a private insurance, California, Illinois, you may be eligible for a whistleblower award. That's pretty significant. Let's go into what constitutes fraud against an insurance company. It could be a multitude of things. Where there is big money in play, there's a big way to try to defraud entities out of that money. So we see things like upcoding, billing for services not rendered, using improper modifiers, using somebody else's credentials, physician not credentialed period, performing and billing for certain services, kickbacks, and self-dealing being some other big areas. And that's generally in the typical health insurance fraud for the normal healthcare practitioner, but there's a whole body of insurance fraud that also involves pharmaceutical insurance fraud. Again, actionable in California and Illinois. And pharmaceutical insurance fraud involves when there's a promotion of a product that is approved by the FDA for one purpose, but then is promoted off-label for an entirely different purpose. Uh, that potentially can constitute insurance fraud, falsification of the actual uh, efficacy, safety of the product. That could be insurance fraud if somebody has information about the NDA, the new drug application, and all the studies that were done. And in fact, the product shouldn't have been approved then theoretically the insurance company wouldn't have paid for the product had it known the danger or safety or efficacy of the product is different. There's also CGMP, current good manufacturing practices. If the pharmaceutical product was not or is not having the correct level of scrutiny to make sure that it goes out safely to the consumers, that could constitute pharmaceutical insurance fraud as well. One thing that you don't wanna overlook is definitely, is there also a federal component? So generally entities that defraud private insurance also are defrauding public insurance, like committing Medicare fraud, Medicaid fraud, TRICARE fraud. So if you know that your company and you're on the inside is committing $10 million a year of insurance fraud in let's say Michigan, and Michigan does not have the private statute that enables you to bring that information forth, and obtain an upside, well, if you know that instead and in addition, it's also committing fraud against the federal government in the form of Medicare, Medicaid fraud, you may be eligible to bring an action under the False Claims Act. 
And that's a whole world where anytime the federal government is defrauded out of money by an entity, the whistleblower is entitled to up to 30% of what the government recovers. And if you remember what I said earlier in the video, private insurance fraud in Illinois and California, up to 50% of what the government recovers. Federal, a little tighter, 30% of what the government recovers you're entitled to. Generally, it's less than that if the case succeeds. Uh, but last fiscal year, the stats are just in for 2023. There was once again over $2 billion recovered. So if somebody had maxed out the recovery on that $2 billion, you're looking at roughly $600 million for potential whistleblower awards for Medicare fraud, Medicaid fraud under the False Claims Act. To take this full circle, we first started talking about when we discussed how to report private insurance fraud, the difference between an insider and an outsider. And an insider, again, would potentially be eligible for a whistleblower award if they blow the whistle the right way in California or Illinois against private insurance fraud that's systemic, or Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE fraud under the False Claims Act, which could be nationwide. An outsider, an individual typically calls us who's a patient and they receive a bill. Well, that, those are hard cases to cobble together because the outsider doesn't have sufficient information to allege the entirety of the nature of the scheme, the intent behind the corporate entity in doing the billing. Sure, we know it's about money, but is it accidental? Is it intentional? If it's just one bill, it's hard to divine from that limited set of facts. So going into reporting options, let's exclude the fact that there's Medicare fraud or Medicaid fraud. Assuming that there's no fraud against the federal government, and then exclude and pair away that there's no fraud against uh, California private insurance or Illinois private insurance. If you're left with the other states, they may have individual programs to offer a pittance of money, a small token sum for an individual reports it, but generally that's not gonna require the use of a lawyer. It may be a good idea to speak with the whistleblower law firm at a time no matter what, because you may not know what you know. You, there may be information that you have intimate knowledge of, for example, some sort of kickback scheme where you think it's lawful because everybody's doing it. We've heard that before. And most firms like Brown LLC will offer with potential whistleblowers free confidential consultations. But going back to the thought, if it's not in those two states, if there's no federal funds implicated, then there's options to report it, and particularly if the individual is an outsider, doesn't understand the inside nature of the scheme, then there are options to report it with each attorney general's office. And depending upon the amount of money in play, that would determine the level of priority of a potential investigation. Another good reason to call a whistleblower law firm ahead of time, even if you're not gonna use them or they're not gonna be able to work with you, is to understand how surgically to present the information because time is uh, very coveted by these attorney general agencies. They're inundated with intakes and complaints all day long, and you wanna be as crystal crisp and precise in the way you report it. The more sprawling in context that you give, uh, the worse off it might be in reporting the private insurance fraud. And for example, if you were billed $500 on a particular day, for a procedure that you never had, that's pretty much the intake. You shouldn't get into, I drove up to the doctor's office and then they asked me these questions and I never had this procedure. All the superfluous information you have to excise and you have to get to the heart of the matter so the attorney general agency could effectively and efficiently and economically evaluate whether it's something that they can look into or not. Once again, I, I thank everybody for your time and listening to these videos. If you have any comments that are non-privileged, uh, please leave them below. If you have questions, make them generic. Don't talk about any specifics. I prefer that you email or call our office for a free confidential consultation. But even if it's not our office, if you're looking to report private insurance fraud, you serve yourself best by speaking with a whistleblower law firm who can educate you about your rights.